All right. So now that I arrived in Thailand, a whole new phase of my project begins because now I'm, I really have to start looking for a boat or a ship over the Pacific Ocean. Almost all the people I told about this think I'm crazy and this is totally impossible. And even I, as a person that thinks many things are possible, <laughs> almost everything is possible, but even I think it's gonna be really, really tough and almost impossible to find a ship because it has to be free. You know, my rules is I cannot spend any money on transportation, so I cannot, you know, there are some cargo ships that offer that you can pay them and then you can get a cabin and then you can go over the Pacific and it takes like one month or so and it's really expensive. But even if it would be cheap, I cannot pay, you know. So yeah, that's a problem. So right now I have 30 days visa in Thailand and I really need to make use of those. And I, my main mission in Thailand is to find a ship. Maybe also enjoy the beaches a little bit because I really, really want to go to the beach and to the ocean because on my whole travels for like almost four months now, I had no beach whatsoever. So I'm really, it's time to get to, get to the water. So the possibilities I see right now to find a ship is for the first possibility I see working on a cargo ship. I basically would work even for free if they would take me over the Pacific. But, but back in the days this was kind of normal or not that hard because you could go basically to any harbor and you would offer your hand, your working hand, for a place to sleep and a lift over the ocean. And many shipping lines would accept that and that's how many people could travel the world for yeah without money but nowadays this has become really really difficult if not impossible because you need certificates they're like you know basic firefighting and marine certificates you need if you want to work on a cargo ship nowadays almost everyone working on a cargo ship is some sort of specialist for something you know you really need to have a skill you know, back in the days you could, you know, do any... There was a lot of positions where you don't have to have a certain skill. They accepted any workers, but nowadays it's extremely difficult, I think. If not impossible, but I will try. And my approach to that is I look on the internet. Maybe I find some opportunities there. I think that's even the biggest chance. And what I will also do is I will go to Bangkok, to like the big harbor there, you know to the cargo harbor and I will just go there and ask, 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 ask. I think this chance is really low, but I will still try and maybe also go in a pub like near the, near the harbor. Maybe I meet some sailors that can help me, I don't know. Maybe I meet some captains, who knows. I will try everything that's in my possibilities to somehow maybe get a ship. So that's the first one. The second opportunity would be to maybe, maybe work on a cruise ship that would be maybe even easier than to work on a cargo ship. I could maybe work as a waiter or maybe in laundry or maybe, you know, basic jobs like room cleaning or, you know, any job. I would to do any job, even without pay. I would work every day, like 20 hours a day, I don't know, like for one lift over the Pacific Ocean to anywhere on the American continent, South America, Middle America, <laughs> Central America, North America, I don't care, you know, I would do anything to get over the Pacific for free. Uh, but also that's pretty difficult, I think, because, yeah, most cruise ships don't go straight over the Pacific. Most go, like, you know, in Southeast Asia, between the islands, to Australia and back, to China, to Japan. And, yeah, really over the... And then also, maybe they want that I work for one season which is like four months or so which wouldn't be ideal but maybe I would think about that you know if that would mean they would take me over the Pacific that would be great you know and it would be also an amazing experience to work on a cruise ship in your life I mean that's kind of interesting I think so the third opportunity that I see right now would be private sailing yachts Private sailing yachts, you know, the small sailboats and catamarans and all of those. There are opportunities of people trying to cross the Pacific or the Atlantic or, you know, do any cruising basically. 
and they need a helping hand because you know crossing an ocean is a huge thing you know you have to always have someone keeping the watch on the boat looking for bigger boats you know so that you don't crash into them or something like that because you know you also sail in the night and you need more people just to cook to keep the boat you know to run the boat to clean everything and yeah also just you know people like to have more people on the boat so that's maybe even the best opportunity for me because I don't need to have any skill I don't need to have any certificates and it would be the best way also because you can stop on all these amazing remote islands in the middle of the Pacific that basically no one ever gets to see so that would be really the jackpot and there are some sites in the internet where you can apply and where there are people with boats posting opportunities so you can sign up and you can say hello and you can create a profile and you can say and this person you upload photos you upload your experience and you upload your plans and what you are offering and what you are trying to do and if you are willing to learn and if you're willing to work and all this stuff and then maybe you can find an opportunity on a boat but there's also a big but sadly there are only very few opportunities but I would be confident if I try long enough I could maybe find one because I would be willing to learn and to work and to help and to work hard on the boat, you know. But the thing is, which I only found out two weeks ago, most people, they sail over the Pacific Ocean from America to Asia. So that's the opposite direction like I, like I go, you know, like 90 or 95% sail this way because the weather makes it way more easy to sail that way and that's kind of a big mistake I made because I did not knew about that before I started my adventure the reason I started my adventure going east was because I needed the most visas I had to get in advance in Germany I needed to get the Iran visa I needed to get the Pakistan visa which was really difficult to get and then I needed to get the Chinese visa which was even more difficult to get so it was easier to get those visas in Germany and then only start the adventure if I even get the visas, you know, because if I would have not get one of these visas, I couldn't, I couldn't do the travel because I kind of need the visas to hitchhike all the way, the, you know, the whole way. So that was the reason I, I started my hitchhiking journey around the world, starting traveling east and not west, you know, I could have also said I circumnavigate the planet west, you know, starting from Germany to Portugal and then trying to get over the Atlantic and so on. And another reason was that I thought I had the best chances of getting a boat in Southeast Asia because luckily in Southeast Asia there are many countries where I get visa on arrival or where I don't even need a visa. There's Thailand, I don't need a visa for that country, I can stay 30 days like that. I don't even have to pay anything. Malaysia, where I can stay 90 days without a visa. I have Singapore, which I can stay 90 days without a visa. Then I have Laos, which I can stay 30 days with a visa on arrival. Then I have Cambodia, where I can stay with a visa on arrival for 30 days. Then I have Vietnam, where I can stay 15 days with a visa on arrival. So this really gives me the opportunity to, you know, hitchhike from country to country because they're all, you know, next to each other so if my search for a boat would take a long time which of course could be the case I mean 30 days is really short and in that 30 days I have to hitchhike in, a, in the country look hitchhike to harbors somehow edit the videos <laughs> and then somehow get out of the country to the next country before my visa expires it's a huge task, it's insane. <laughs> it's not a holiday, believe me. But I like it, it's a challenge, and I love challenges. And so, yeah. <laughs> so I will basically try to get a boat in Thailand first. And another advantage, of course, is that Southeast Asia is a lot cheaper than Europe. And if I would travel, if I would have started my travel around the world west, I would have maybe waited in Spain or Portugal to get a ship over the Atlantic 
And if I would have waited there, you know, it's Europe, it's way more expensive than Southeast Asia. So that's another disadvantage of going west. So now, firstly, I will try to catch a boat somehow in, in Thailand and, you know, go to the big harbors where there are cargo ships. And maybe I get lucky, who knows? And I find a cargo ship which has not that strict regulations. You never know, you know. So I will try to do that and then maybe I will go to Cambodia, try there. And always, you know, at the same time, look on the internet of maybe sail opportunities of sailing boats. And then go to Vietnam. If I still don't find a boat, I can go back to Cambodia. Maybe you go back to Laos even. Maybe go back to Thailand. Then go maybe to Malaysia. Then go to Singapore. And then I can go back and forth. But yeah, I don't know how long I will do this if I don't find a boat. But I've, I'm sure, you know, even just traveling all, all these countries and looking for a boat at the same time will be an epic adventure. And I think the chances are really low that I find a boat. If I look really realistic on the whole thing. But I'm a crazy optimist, so... F*** it. I will just try it. I mean, what could, what could go wrong? I mean, even here, traveling back and forth doesn't really mean for me wasting any time, so... That's all valuable time I spent doing what I love and gaining life experience. So, yeah, that's basically, I cannot even fail, you know. I, yeah, that's the beauty of my journey for me at least. I cannot really fail on this journey. It's more like I can succeed 100% or I can succeed 110% or 200% or I don't know. It, yeah. <laughs> I'm just really happy to be in Thailand now and. I'm really excited for what this journey can bring and what people I will meet on this journey, what experiences I can get, the good and the bad, to grow, you know. Yeah, we will see where this crazy journey brings me. I mean, so far, there's been so many crazy things happening to me. I don't know. I could... I might as well just find a boat over the ocean, who knows? <laughs> So, just to give you an in-depth idea about my plan, how I imagined I could find a boat over the ocean. So yeah, if any one of you knows a captain of a crew, of a cruise ship line or a captain of a cargo ship line or you have a friend of a friend or your father is one or your grandfather or your colleague or whatever, just tell them about my adventure, maybe, maybe. Maybe, 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 also that way we could make this happen. <laughs> I would love to make this happen. That would be, this would be like the greatest accomplishment of, of my life, I think, to find, an, to find somehow, to somehow hitchhike a ship over the Pacific. I mean, how crazy would that be? And then hitchhike on the... American continent somewhere, South America, Central America, North America, I don't care. All of that would be amazing. And then maybe even find a ship over the Atlantic back to Europe. Oh my god. But I, I, can't, even, I can't even plan that far now. So yeah, I just hope every single one of you are doing great. And see you tomorrow where I continue to hitchhike in Thailand for the first time ever. Oh, I have no idea. People, I asked some people now here if they know hitchhiking, no one knew it. So yeah, we'll see how it goes and yeah, see you tomorrow for hitchhiking. Maybe, 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 maybe.